I'm Christy Everton Johnson, the host of More Victorious Living, and I want to welcome you today. I am so excited about this series, Free for Life for Real. <laughs> I hope that you've enjoyed the first two segments. I have enjoyed them myself. I've enjoyed diving into God's Word with you. I've enjoyed um, learning how According to Psalms 91, if we make God our home, if we run to Him and shelter our lives in Him, make, make a shelter, build a house in Him, that we are protected from the enemy. We are, are the generations that follow us, our household will be blessed. We are protected from the snares and the pitfalls of life. And um, I hope that that's encouraged you. This morning, I was listening to the first two sessions to remind myself, because it's been a couple of weeks since um, I had done those, but I was so blessed by the encouragement that the Word of God has. As I listened to even myself, it's so weird sometimes people say, are you watching yourself? <laughs> Y'all, the other day, I almost missed a plane going to a prison event. I was doing a prison tour in North Florida. And I got to, I got on the Pando app myself and I started watching our uh, Christmas and our Easter programs and watching our team members. And I started watching uh, one of my series between a rock and a hard place. And I was just engrossed in it and I almost missed my plane. And I said, could you imagine if I had to tell somebody I missed my plane because I was watching myself on videos? <laughs> that would have been embarrassing. But I do watch because I want, I want to make sure what I'm saying is accurate. And a lot of times I get into the groove of teaching and I don't even know sometimes what's coming out of my mouth. And when I go back and I look at those, I am amazed because there are things, you can watch me in the video, where I will kind of stop because it's something I never thought of. And God is teaching me as I'm teaching you. So I have to go back and listen, because I'm being a student. Where I was a mouthpiece, I've got to go back and be a student and practice what I'm preaching. And I think the world would be a better place if we all practiced more what we preach. Don't you agree? So we are continuing this study, Free for Life for Real. And um, we, like I said, we've talked about Psalms 91. We talked about in the last segment, segment two, where it is dare to hope, like, there is hope. If you're in Christ, you're in hope. And he's got you and he sees you. We learned how he brings dead things back to life. And I want to encourage you today that there is nothing in your life that is too far gone, that is too dead, that is too ruined for God to restore and to redeem. It doesn't matter whether someone else destroyed it or whether your own choices and your mindset and, and in your anger, you destroyed things. It doesn't matter how it got destroyed. It doesn't matter how your life, got, I mean, it matters, but my point is whether your life got down this dark road because of your choices or because it started because of the choices of another, the way to be free is the same, no matter how it happened. Just like um, on the other side of these walls here is Lake Christie. Lake Christie is, and I'm going to tie it all together, just stay with me. Lake Christie is a lake that my mother and father, it was uh, built for me when I was 11 years old. And I'm going to show you Lake Christie, and we're actually going to do some teachings in this series from the lake. It's just a little hot out there right now, and I prefer the air condition. So you guys are in my writing cabin right now. This is a... A, a cabin that was built in like 1981, as you can see over there, the little kitchen area. It's uh, it's original, uh, original wood, and I love coming out here, writing Victorious Living magazine stories and editing. And you know, on the other side of this wall, though, is water. And I skied countless. I was going to say thousands. That would not be an under, understatement. Thousands of hours on the water on the other side of this lake. And I fell over and over and over again. I bet you know what that feels like. Like you, you're trying something new. 
you're trying to maybe to walk this Christian life and you keep tripping up. Maybe you're trying to stay, stay clean and you keep tripping up. And, you know, there were times I'd go out there and I'd be water skiing and I'd have to try something new and I would fall. And I had to make a choice after I fell. Am I going to get up, say hit it to the boat driver, or am I going to quit it? There were times when my equipment broke. There were times when storms would come up and times the weather was so cold or the water was rolly or maybe I'd hit something in the water and I would fall down. Maybe sometimes it was what someone told me to do was not the right thing. Or maybe the boat driver veered off course. Maybe my equipment broke. I did that because the ski broke in half. The ropes have broken while I've skied. And you find your, I found myself in the water because of my mistakes, equipment failure, circumstances, and the mistakes of others. And I'm here to tell you, the way to get up in life is the same. The path to freedom is the same, whether you are trying to be free from wrong thinking, trying to be free from addiction or spending, addiction to alcohol or drugs or people or eating or spending, the way and the road to freedom, the way and the road to getting up after you've made mistakes and you've found yourself in deep waters is the same. And we've already learned this in our studies. You, you've got to, one, have a desire to continue. You have to choose very carefully who your power source is going to be. Is it going to be the power sources of this world? Are you going to try to self-power yourself, self-effort, positive thinking? Or are you going to connect to a power source, the Word of God, the Holy Spirit of God, being in the presence of God, and, and allow Him, His strength to come into your life and to get you up? Once you have connected to that power source and you've gotten up with that power source, are you going to follow it? Or are you going to fight against it? Are you going to take the, the coaching and the promises and the, the, the words of life and apply them to your life? Or are you going to be stubborn and just do things your own way? So for the pathway to freedom is about, number one, having the right power source. And we talked about in session one that I don't need to bring you new methods I don't need to bring you new ways to be free. I just need to introduce you to the power source that'll not only give you the desire, but it says in Philippians 2.13, I believe it is, the desire and the strength and the power to carry it out. That's what you have in a relationship with God. And then it is about making the decision every single day to take one step after the other. No matter what your circumstances look like, it's about remembering what you know to be true, trusting the process, and continuing to travel steadily along God's path. Let me see if I can find this scripture. This, this scripture, oh, give me one second. I looked down the other day and my eyes fell on this scripture. It is Psalms 37, verse 34. And this was where I was starting to get bound up in some fear. Fear can stop you in your tracks. Fear does not lead to freedom. Fear leads to bondage. And I was having fear. And I looked down and I saw this verse. Psalms 37, 34. Put your hope in the Lord. Travel steadily along his path. He will honor you by giving you the land. You will see the wicked destroyed. And I believe this is a very powerful verse for you and for me. The road to freedom, we've already talked about it. It's, it's being having the right person, the person of God, the person of Jesus, the person of the Holy Spirit leading you. He's your power source. He's the one infusing you with the wisdom and the strength. And then you are trusting him. You are following him. You're letting go of the things that you've been holding on to and that trip you up 
and you move forward one step, one step, one step at a time. Does that mean every step will be perfect? No. Uh, Y'all, I remember years ago in high school, ESPN had been to my high school and they had been following me around. They were doing a segment about my water skiing. And this, this guy came up, really tall guy, and he was a basketball player. And he says, hey, skier girl, you ever fallen on those water skis? And I said, uh, yeah, every day. And he said, you ain't no good. <laughs> and so I just like, okay, whatever. So I looked at him and I said, hey, basketball guy. And he's like, yeah. I said, you ever missed a shot? And he's like, well, of course. I said, I guess you ain't no good either. And he just looked kind of stared at me and then we both burst out laughing and he goes, I guess you got a point. So the point is it's about traveling steadily on God's path, trusting him, leaning into him. But we are creatures with a sinful nature and every day we have to put that nature to death. <laughs> so as we're in that struggle, sometimes we will make mistakes. We will go into fear. We will go into doubt. We will go into maybe some frustration and anger or some guilt and shame. And, and that's when we have to refocus on God and we have to put our hope in the Lord. That's just like Psalms 91 said in our first session in this series. Psalms 91, those that shelter, that put their hope in God, that live continually in Him, are going to find protection. They're going to be led and not be tripped up. So that's what it's saying. Put your hope, your trust, your confidence, your confidence. It's not like this wishy-washy hope. Oh, I hope God shows up. I hope He He shows up in my case. I hope that He brings my brings me a wife. I hope. No, it is Hope is an active waiting. It is a trusting. It is an expectancy. You're expectant that God sees you, knows you, loves you, and is going to lead you into a path of freedom. So he says, trust me. Put your trust in me. So if you want freedom for real, freedom for life for real, it's about trusting God. Trust me, he says, put your hope in the Lord. Travel steadily along his path. Not your path, not the path of your homies, not the path of your girlfriend or your boyfriend. You're the path that God has for you. How do you know that path? The word of God will direct your feet. It says, first of all, in Proverbs, let me, let me give you this word. Proverbs 3, 5. Proverbs 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek God's will in all you do, and he will show you what path to take. So over here, it's saying, travel steadily along his path. How do you know what that path is? You say, God, direct my footsteps. You don't lean into your own understanding, with your limited thinking. Because what we do is we are looking through the glasses. Man, these glasses are dirty right now. That's why I don't even have to see the reflection. And, and I've been touching them. They're so dirty. I'm not even wearing them right now. Because they're going to cloud my vision. And there's so many of us, when we trust in ourselves, in our own thinking, we're looking at the life through the glasses that are hazy. We can't see the whole picture, but God can. We're looking through lenses of distrust, of hurt, of fear. Maybe traumas have happened. Every single one of us have been through traumas. You're looking through a lens of those traumas. That's why God says, don't lean in on your understanding because your understanding is limited. Your understanding on your own devices is faulty. You need my wisdom. So he says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust his love for you. Trust that he's got you. Trust that he has a plan. Don't depend on your own understanding. Don't depend on what you see to direct you. Don't depend on what you feel. A lot of times our understanding is based on our feelings. We don't feel good. We don't 
feel like it. Our feelings are hurt. So we start thinking in line with a hurt heart or a hurt mind. God's saying, don't rely on your own understanding. Acknowledge me. Seek my will. This is where you say, God, I need you. God, I've done this my whole life on my own, and I just keep ending up in bondage. And I'm asking you, God, to direct my life. I'm going to quit being, I've, I've, I've had two friends, uh, Sheridan and my friend Jack Murphy, where the Lord told them to fire themselves from being the, the, the CEO of their life and hire him <laughs> and let God lead because they weren't doing so good. And I can tell you, when I was trying to be the CEO of my life, the leader of my life, I was taking myself down some dead end paths. It's a very painful paths, and you know what I'm talking about. So he says, seek your, his will, and he will show you what path to take. In Psalms, I believe it's 119, it says that his word is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. The other day I got picked up after our Florida prison tour, I got picked up by an Uber driver in Tallahassee. And this young man had, had been a football player for um, Florida State. And we were talking, it was like four or five o'clock in the morning. And we were talking and he's like, we start talking about the Lord. And he says, yeah, I just, I'm trying to find God's plan for my life and for my family's life. And I was looking at his headlights and we were driving in this dark road. And I said, sir, I think his name was Babyon. I said, Baby on, I think that was his name, or it might have been someone I met in the prisons, but I said, let's pretend it was baby on. I said, hey, I said, you see that headlight you've got on? He's like, yeah. I said, that headlight there is giving you enough light to travel this road. You can see about a hundred, couple hundred feet in front of you. I said, but as you keep traveling steadily, the path will continue to be lit up. There'll be road signs telling you which way to go. And you're in the, in the road, the, the pathway will be lit. And that's what God's saying. His word, as you submit your life to him every day, his word is enough to tell you the next step to take. And his word will direct your feet be a light unto your feet, lamp unto your feet, and a light unto your path. A lamp's got enough light to give you a couple of steps, and then the pathway's lit. I look back over my life. I never dreamed that I would be in prison ministry. I was a water skier, for goodness sakes. That was my life. That was where I was headed. When I was done with that, I was going to be a motivational speaker, or I was going to be a coach and, and work with children in the sport. And but what I did is I said, God, this is the direction I'm going, but I am willing to have my plans interrupted because I want your plan, God, for my life. I acknowledge you know better than I do. And wherever you want to lead me, I will go. And it was a very gradual thing. It was me going steadily down the path, trusting God, going steadily down the path that was in front of me, living with integrity and honor, and faithfulness, being faithful to God on both sides of the wall, meaning in my home and in public. And there's a lot of people that go out and they put up a good front on the outside for people to see, but their heart is full of evil. And I'm not saying I don't have some issues of the heart. What I am saying is every day I'm like, Lord, search my heart. And God, I'm dealing with this anger right now and I'm a little frustrated. I'm feeling a little guilty and maybe a little prideful here. I need you to deal with me and teach me and reveal to me the things. This, is, this was the prayer of David in Psalms 30, 139. Let me, let me read it to you. He says in Psalms 139, verse 23 and 24. And let me make sure this is David. Yep, Psalm of David. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. I just love how God directs these, 
these programs. Because when I sat here, I was going to be talking to you about Ruth. <laughs> and we'll talk about Ruth later. But God has shown me and showing you at the same time that it's about traveling steadily to freedom. It's, it's being committed for the journey. And you don't have to know the end of the journey. You just got to know the one who's leading you. And if you're holding God's hand and you're saying, God, search me, show me, test me, teach me. I'm yours. I know I'm firing myself. I'm firing all these people and I'm just going to submit myself to you. Take me, use me, search me, show me. I'm going to get in your word, God. And I'm going to do my best to apply this word to my heart. Because it says in James, we've talked about this, that a man that looks in the mirror and walks away unchanged, that man hasn't accomplished anything. And that's what we're like, it says in James, when we look in the word of God and we don't take it to heart and do it. We're like a man that looks in the mirror, sees all your issues, and just forgets what you look like and walks on and goes on about your day. God wants to teach us, not because he's like this mean teacher that's always wanting to take our fun away. He's wanting to teach you the path of life. He says, for I know the plans that I have for you. They're good plans. He's not saying they're comfortable. God's, God's more concerned with our character. God wants to lead us down the path of righteousness. And as we take step after step, steadily, not sprinting and stopping and giving up, steadily, step after step after step after step, God will direct our footsteps. God will lead us along the path of everlasting life. He will lead us down the abundant life path that he promises in John 10.10. 10. says that the enemy has come to steal kill and destroy. But I have come, Jesus says, to give you life and life more abundantly. God wants to give you eternal life. John three sixteen, for God so loved you and me that he gave his one and only son, Jesus, to die for us, that if we would believe in him, we would have everlasting life. We've all most likely heard that verse. It's such a popular verse. I don't know if you remember Tim Tebow had it painted on his cheeks. And uh, man, because of that, John 3.16 became one of the top Google verses and, and of words of anything. I mean, people were like, what does that say? But a lot of people stop there and they don't read verse the verses after it. And it's beautiful. So we've already heard John 3.16. For God loved the world so much. God loved you. The creator of this world loved you, that he gave his one and only son, Jesus, so that everyone, everyone is everyone. That's not just Christy and a couple other people. That's everyone. That's you, no matter what you've done, no matter what you've thought, no matter what someone has done to you. He says, so that everyone who believes in him, Jesus, will not perish. They will not be separated from God, but have eternal life. God sent his son, this is verse 17. God sent his son Jesus into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. There's no judgment against anyone who believes in Jesus, but anyone who does not believe in Jesus has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only Son. God's light came into the world, but people love the darkness more than they love the light. I hope that's not you. For me, it was a long, I mean, I knew about Jesus, but I wasn't following his path. And it didn't lead me to incarceration in jail or in a prison, but man, was I incarcerated in my heart and mind. I was incarcerated to performing, to people pleasing, to perfectionism. I was incarcerated to fear of failing. And I'm telling you, 
you can be free on the outside physically and be in so much bondage. And that was me because I knew about Jesus, but I was not acknowledging him. I was not asking him to direct my footsteps. I had my plan and I was running after it. And my plan almost killed me. And maybe your plan has almost killed you physically, emotionally, spiritually. And God's just saying right here, God didn't send his son to judge all of you. God is not sitting on his throne looking at all the things that you and I have done wrong. He sent his son Jesus to pay the price for all of that. Why? So you can have freedom from sin, so that you can have eternal life, but also so that you can have the abundant life. God sent his, world, his son into the world to save you to free you. And the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There's not condemnation. There's not confusion. There's not bondage. The word of God is freedom. The word of God is life to you. The spirit of God brings you into a place of freedom. The key that we've learned today is trusting him trusting him. Let's go back to our key verse from today. I thank God for leading us to that. I thank him for being with us. I hope you've enjoyed it. Psalms 37, 34. Let's remember that. Psalms 37, 34. Psalms 37, 34. This is a good one. Put your hope in the Lord. Travel steadily along his path. He will honor you. And that's something that God will honor you by giving you the land. What is the land? It's the land of freedom. When I pray, a lot of times I'm praying for freedom for myself, for my children. I'm praying for freedom for you. I pray that our ministry will reach the land and the nation of prisons with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's what I was praying when I looked down. I said, Lord, <laughs> I need your help. I'm afraid. And he says, put your hope in me. Keep moving, Chrissy, down my path. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't be afraid. God will honor you by giving you the land, giving you the desires of your heart, which is freedom, giving you the nations that you have prayed for, giving your children freedom. You will see the wicked destroyed. And I believe the wicked is anything that sets itself up against God's plan for you. It's the evil in this world. It's the, the evil offerings of this world. It's fear. It's shame. It's anything that is not of God. And when we are following him and we're trusting him, that evil, the addiction, the patterns, all those things that have brought destruction in your life that have sought to kill, steal, and destroy you will be destroyed destroyed. So dare to hope as we learned in, in number two, session two, keep taking your shelter in God. We learned that in session one. And today we learned in session three of this series to trust God and to keep taking those guided steps day after day after day. And uh, we will pick this up in the next session as we continue our series, Free for Life for Real. God bless you. I love you. And be sure to look at these slides that are coming up right after I say goodbye. Goodbye. Are you an inmate in prison who needs encouragement? Write to us at Victorious Living. P.O. Box 2751, Greenville, North Carolina, 27836. To view Victorious Living Magazine in its entirety, please have your chaplain contact us at 352-478-2098 or through our website, vlmag.org. We are happy to provide bulk copies free of charge with or without staples. God bless you.